Once you begin to see how words and terms and symbols are used and the powers that be in this world have set up a world of symbols and emblems and terms and catchphrases. Once you understand how this system works for the first time, the world opens up to you. All of it is right in front of you. But if you don't understand what the words are and what the words mean, you're never going to figure out how this stuff works. There's a very sinister, frightening, interesting symbolism that has been imposed upon this country and the people have no idea in the world what's going on. And I will guarantee you, no matter how educated you might think you are, I will guarantee you, you have no idea in the world how the world actually works. You need to understand that when even on your check, when you're writing a check, the place where you put your name on a check, look at that line, what you're signing on, and get a magnifying glass and you will find that's not a solid line to sign your name on. That is written, it's a typed written sentence that's been honed down to microscopic size. Get a magnifying glass and read on a check what, what is said where you sign your name. One of the most interesting symbols in Druidism was a magic wand. Magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree, made out of hollywood. And we're still seeing the magic of the wood of the holly tree. Hollywood. Hollywood motion pictures, television. I have discovered many years ago that words and magical systems dominate the world that we live in. There is, in point of fact, a magical matrix at work. I've always been interested in the occult. Occult is simply a word meaning hidden, and so much of our powers in this world and the way things work are, are hidden. And uh, the more one looks at this subject of how the world actually works, you begin to see that there's a magical system, and I'm telling you there really is a magical system dominating the world of the Western civilization. And for a thousand years before the Roman Empire existed in Northern Europe, basically Western Europe, um, there was a magical priesthood called the Druids, and the Druids still even exist to this day. And it was a very legitimate political, social, uh, educational, religious institution dominating Europe for thousands of years. And they were referred to as the Druids. They were actually from the Phoenician Canaanite system in the Middle East. The Phoenician Canaanites formed the basis for the ancient Druidic system, and that's even older. But in the ancient Druidic system, there were many powerful symbols and emblems. One of the most interesting symbols in Druidism was a magic wand like Merlin the Magician with his magic wand. Magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree. It was made out of hollywood. And we're still seeing the magic of the wood of the holly tree. Hollywood, motion pictures, television. And once you begin to see the symbols and realize that the symbols for the national coats of arms for countries, the flags, the seals, the presidential seals, the emblems for the logos and emblems on corporate, uh, corporations, especially the, uh, the the corporate emblems for motion pictures and television companies like Columbia Broadcasting System, CBS has the I. The Colombian uh, system goes back to the Colombian faction of the Illuminati back in the early 1700s, not the late 1700s. And you begin to see why space shuttle is called Columbia. You have Columbia University, Columbia uh, pictures, Columbia Broadcasting. Columbia is a very interesting word and, and it's connected to the Jesuits. Once you begin to see how words and terms and symbols are used, and of course symbols are extraordinarily important in world affairs, all of a sudden it opens up, as I said, a whole new perspective on how stuff is happening. Let me give you an example of how words, uh, my friend uh, uh, William Henry says you put an S in front of the word word and it becomes swords. The words are swords. They are cutting things. They, people are, humans are word responsive creatures. We respond to people's words. When you begin to see how words are used, let me give you an example of the magic. Why do you have to go to court? You go to court because you play basketball on a court. You play tennis on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Why? Because the people that develop it know it's a racket. That's where we get the term. Consequently, 
you need to understand that the words which are used by the systems under which we live are not by chance. In a court, the whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. So this team of attorneys, they stand up and throw the ball back at the other team. Now the ball's in their court. They have to get up and throw the ball back into that court. The judge, the judge wears a black robe. Why does a judge wear a black robe? Well, the same reason Catholic priests wear black robes. Rabbis wear black robes. You wear a black robe. For many years, uh, young, young people graduating from university and college wear a black robe. What's this stuff with a black robe? Let me give you an ex example of how this stuff works, and it's a very quick example. There are two basic kinds of law under the law of magic. There are two kinds of laws that govern the earth. One is called the law of the land, L-A-N-D. And we've heard that term, law of the land. Why do you use that term, the law of the land? Because that's where people live is on land. But there's an opposing law, which is far more important, far, far more powerful. It is called the law of water. It was developed under the old Druidic system in Europe, which can trace its history back to the Roman Empire through the Vatican, and ultimately back to the Phoenician Canaanites in the Middle East of what we today call uh, Phoenicia, Cana, was called back uh, what we call today Israel and Lebanon. Syria, that was called Phoenicia, Cana. And the Phoenician Canaanites, the very word Cana, which we've all heard in relation to the Bible, Cana uh, is a Phoenician word meaning bankers, merchant bankers. Well, the Phoenician Canaanites set up a system of merchant banking and had their Phoenician Canaanite symbols and words connected to their societies, their banking societies. We're talking about in the Middle, in the Middle East. And then through the Greece and ultimately through Rome and then into Britannia, and ultimately into this country comes an ancient Druidic Phoenician Canaanite magical system of finance, education, and all of it is right in front of you. But if you don't understand what the words are and what the words mean, you're never going to figure out how uh, this stuff works. We all have a cursory understanding of what we think is going on. That's not it. You need to understand that when even on your check, when you're writing a check, the place where you put your name on a check, Look at that line, what you're signing on, and get a magnifying glass, and you will find that's not a, a solid line to sign your name on. That is written. It's a typed, written sentence that's been uh, honed down to microscopic size. Get a magnifying glass and read on a check what, what is said, where you sign your name. That's why the attorneys tell you, you better check the small print. The small print is ultra small. Where you sign your name on a check is saying something. Go back and read it. You need to understand that according to the old Phoenician Canaanite system, which we call today our judicial education on judicial system, there is no law in this country or in the Western world, no law, federal, state, county, city, commercial, it makes no difference. There is no law on the books anywhere in this country that applies to you as an individual creature. There is no law because the people who designed the system thousands of years ago realized that there's two of you. There's the one that your mother gave birth to, that God created, so to speak, and even your mother didn't know what you were doing. Even your father and your mother have no idea what you're thinking or what you will do. You don't even know. So consequently, they have no control over you, your flesh and blood self. But somebody has to control this show, and so consequently, the ancient Phoenician Canaanites developed a, new, a system by which they would assign to every person a second you. And this is the way it works in America. There is two of you, just as there are two states in this country of every state. There's two states. You have the state of Nevada and Nevada State. You have Cal State, California State, and state of California. Not the same thing at all. California State, according to the law, is one thing. State of California is totally different, has nothing to do with each other at all. It's the difference between being a lawyer and an attorney, has nothing to do with them at all. It's totally separate words, means totally separate thing. Consequently, when you understand how words and terms are used and symbols are used, then we go back to the idea of the court, and as I said, there is no law.